Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of CVTV Workshop. Again, you know, we're doing another show here and actually this one's gonna be interesting, but my name is Carlos your co and my co-host David Dakin, owner of Coralview. How are you doing, Dave? Doing good today, man. How about yourself? Doing well. How's the weather in New Orleans? You know, we always start the show. How's the weather in New Orleans? It's hot. It's hot, man. We we hot. Have a full blown summer now. Ooh, you 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 here in Chicago. It's ready for your visit when you're coming down. Know, exactly, exactly. No, here in Chicago, I think we're in the 80s or 90s, and it's a little bit hot in weather. So um, uh, it, it's you know. It, it's Chicago, which yeah. means that one day is cold, the other day is raining, and the other day is hot. You know, yeah. what, what are you going to do? But the one thing we don't have here in Chicago is New Orleans food. That food uh, is fantastic, man. Well, we'll treat you to some of that when you head down in a couple of weeks, maybe. <laughs> exactly. All right. So before we move on, I want to say hello to everybody. I want to say hello to Wendy. I want to say hello to um, Jeff Bernadette is here. Also, Mark Kennery is here. Dave Pulsing is here, too. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We love everybody coming and visiting us. We actually have this show every couple of weeks. So if you like the show or if this is the first time you're here, please, we stream live on Facebook and on YouTube. And, you know, if you like the show, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, hit that like, thumbs up. You know, we you will see Wendy there saying, hit the thumbs up because you'll be notified right away when we have a show and then you won't miss anything. And we cover some pretty cool things in here. We have a really cool show today, which is not a mainstream show, yet I know that a lot of people use or would like to use this little feature of the Hydros device. That, Dave, tell me what we're doing. We're talking about zero to 10. And uh, a lot of people really don't know what is zero to 10. And it's a, it, it's a delivery protocol. And uh, maybe you've heard about it to control lights. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of that in the past to be able to uh, dim and, and increase uh, light intensities. But what we're talking about today is a zero to 10 volt input and uh and what what is out there what can we do with this uh there's a lot of little neat uh tricks and gadgets i guess you could say that we can set up on our aquariums uh to do automation and uh so that, that's what we're going to talk about with this this little protocol so zero to ten you know and like you said i've heard a lot of it during um, um with the gyre sometimes and I've heard it with lights, you know, it's like a, it's almost like a volume control. It's like a master volume control where you have the controller send from zero to 10 volts, which most devices out there will interpret that into zero to a hundred. Yeah. So they multiply everything by a factor of 10. So if the controller sends out one volt, that means 10%. So the pump will run at 10% intensity or the light will turn at 10% intensity and so forth. So lights, you could have multiple channels and then you can control different channels like the whites and the blues and the reds differently based on what you, what voltage you send from your controller, right. you know, and that's yeah. great. But the one hidden thing that most people don't know is how to use the zero to 10 volt input. Yeah. You know, yeah. what can we do? What can you do to trigger and get the controller to receive some kind of information and then use it? And I think the two things that we're going to cover today are like pretty cool and they're going to make people's lives so much easier. And I'm yeah. not talking about making it like, you know, you're going to your corals are going to grow fast or anything like that, but it's just the human convenience of having little things that could, that can make the experience of keeping a tank a little bit more pleasurable. Yeah. You think about it, Carlos, how many people have their equipment and everything in a cabinet? I'd probably say 90% of people in the hobby. So when you open the cabinet, what are you, are you in the dark? <laughs> yeah, I gotta get my I gotta get my flashlight light to see to, to, to see uh, if, if something is bubbling or yeah. something is connected or if you know it or or stick my hand in there to feel if the pump is actually running. Right. You know, yeah, you can, I can't see anything. Thing. You're crawling around and I can't see. I need a flashlight. <laughs> Imagine how, how easy your life would be as if you open that door and a light clicks on in the cabinet and illuminates all your equipment. Oh. So you easily see everything. So that's, that would that's, that that's a, that's pretty convenient i would think huh yeah and you know what the thing about it is that it, it's it's dave it's one of those things that you we talk about it and everybody goes like ah 
but not many people use it. Right. And, and, and it's you know, really so simple. You know, and the thing about it that we do it is because up until today, up until this time, up until the hydros, it has been kind of a a, a programming nightmare to create something this simple. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, to have a controller do it automatically when you open the door. You know, and and. We here at Hydros, we decided it's like, you know, it doesn't have to be this hard. Right. So we're going to show you how to do this in literally about five minutes. It'll take you longer to install the hardware than right. to actually program it on your on your Hydros. Yeah. What yeah, else so are we go ahead. I was going to if you wanted to, we'll go through and talk about what we got. And and this is a it's a door switch. And yeah. this, is, this is connects to your zero to 10 volt cable and mm -hmm. our cables. These are breakout cables. So which means is it's each one has its own lead coming from the actual connector. So you could have one going to the left side, one to the right, but allows four channels, different separate channels to put zero to 10 volt devices on. So one thing we came up with here is this is a cabinet door switch. So this easily connects and I'll connect it to the brown channel, connect it, snaps in place and here's your switch so the switch is just a magnetic switch that attaches to the door so when you i have seen them i have move. seen those switches before yeah. where, where have i seen them probably like on windows for burglar alarms you might have seen huh. those so, but it's a simple little switch magnetic switch and we have a kit that we put together here and it actually comes with uh, the mounting hardware with it as well. So you can use this double-sided sticky tape to mount the magnets where you want it to switch on your door. And it comes with screws if you prefer to, to hard mount it in place. So it's really just a, a really simple device. And from there, you can go into your hydros and turn on lights. And it, so, that easy. so the way... So the way you install it is, so I take it, the, the wired sensor yeah. is on the cabinet itself. Yeah. Some, it's like a, it's like, it's like a door sensor for an alarm. You put it at the top right. So when you close the door, the two magnets come together. And then when you open the door, the magnets separate. Yeah. That's, That's it. Oh man, how simple is that? So well, and at that point, Carlos and you decide, okay, well then, you know, you obviously you need the light. This just acts as a switch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we at Coralview coming up with a couple of different options for that as well. This is one I like to show you. And this actually has this is an LED light. It's very thin, water resistant. This is all filled with like a rubber coating. So it's uh -huh. IP65 rating. And it has wow. a connector on it as well. For so, the drive port, I assume? That's our GX connector. So actually, you this light here, you'd be able to power off of your your drive port. So you can power it from a, a drive port on the controller itself. You don't need, you know, plug it into uh, one of your Wi-Fi strips or to a, a wall outlet. So that that'll power it, and the door switch will do the switching. So to just wow. one example of you know how you can make it really simple and illuminate your entire equipment area. Well, that's part one of the, 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 the show. What about part two? We have another simple, incredibly simple. And, and you know what? I'm one of those people because um, I love, I'm a big techie guy and I love technology, but yeah. sometimes there's some things out there that the old, the old true tested way, just for me, it's like, I trust, I trust it just as well. But, you know, a lot of controllers don't offer that option right now. So what's the second option that we're, uh, what's the second tip idea that we're giving people today? Yeah, we're talking about a float switch. So where you could set up is your own float switch and have the hydros actually do the switching and the actual mechanism is there to do the so, switch, the float yeah. switch. But the zero to 10 is your, your actual switch to control then you can put a pump for an ATO and deliver that water back to the equip the sump or aquarium. Exactly. Or you know what? You can use it as a backup. Yeah. You know, that's it. That's a backup. Uh, so I have 
So I have the the optical eye, which work really well, really well. But you know what? You know, sometimes let's all be honest. Let's let's be honest, Dave. You know, we are Coral View. We 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 manufacture this stuff, yep. but we're not gonna we're not gonna sugarcoat it. It's going to fail. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a matter of when. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's not a matter of if. I'm sorry. It's a matter of when it's going to fail. Right. You know, we we do our due diligence to make sure that it doesn't fail. But it you know, there's a matter of fail. We so like you redundancy. This, yeah. So you can do this redundancy, and what it does is this tiny little, you know, old-fashioned old technology switch waters down as the water goes up. This floaty thing would. It's it's very light, and it will just go up. And right. as soon as it goes up it'll tell the controller that the water is high and then do something. And then when you drain it, boop, yeah. that's it. It, that's could be also, uh, it could also be your low level indicator. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. So, you know, those are two things that are pretty handy. We use yeah. them all the time. Um, uh, and and they, make, they may not make corals grow faster. They may not, you know, cure your fish of ick or something, but, at the end of the day, it's a matter of convenience and making it easier for us where we are enjoying what we do instead right. of fighting with it. The last, as, as Dave, you said it, the last thing I want to do is get into that cabinet and then be yelling, Han, can you find this? Can you find the flashlight? I can't see right. anything. Yeah. And you know, and my wife is probably going to say, it's where you left it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's not helping, but okay. Right. You know, so, so opening yeah. the cabinet would be good. All right, guys. So, so far, if you like the show, if you like what you see, please, we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. So please hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up or ring that little bell and you'll be notified right away of when a new show starts. Also, if you have any questions about the product, head on over to our community forum, forum.coralviewhydros.com. We have an extensive group of people of fellow hobbyists that are always willing to help. We may not be a big community, but we're a very helpful community. And you know what? No question, no dumb question is ever asked. The only dumb question is the is the question that was never asked. So please make sure that you hang, you know head over to forum.coralbehydros.com and check it out. So Dave, okay, so we know about zero to ten volts. Yeah. Now we're trying to getting a, a, a sense of what it does and it's not that it's not that hard we're gonna make it really yeah. easy cool yeah. so on the next episode on the next not on the next episode i mean on the next segment we will go ahead and show you how to program the hydros to use those little sensors and the float switch but before we do that let's listen to let's watch our sponsors Hey everybody, welcome back to Coral View CVTV workshops. My name is Carlos and my co-host Dave, and we're doing a workshop on zero to 10 volt inputs. How you doing there, Dave? So far so good? Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool show, simple, but uh, some good tips on, on how to make our lives a little easier. Exactly. Before we move on to the segment, I want to say hello to everybody. Thank you again for watching. All our visitors, they're, they're here, and we always see them. We always love seeing them. If you are just tuning in, please, we are CBTV Workshops. We do this every other week, mostly, and then we are streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. If you, have, if you like the show, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, or hit the thumbs up, and then you'll be notified right away when the show happens. If you have any questions on the product, also head on over to forum.coralviewhydros.com, a great community of people that are always willing to help. So Dave, right now, let's jump in. I'm going to show you how to program, well, how to plug it in first, and then how to program the little switch. So okay. the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our 0 to 10 volt quad cable. I have to think about that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> I had to think about that one. So it's a quad cable. And it's a cable that connects to the GX12 either 
input or output of your control. Yeah. All right. Hey, I can hear the dogs out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're <kept> friendly here. <laughs> yes, they are friendly. Yes. So we have an input and output. For our purposes today, we want to plug this this quad cable into the G into the GX12 zero to ten volt in. Now, Dave, what happens if I have a control two or an XS and I don't have a zero to ten volt input or output? What can I do? Well, maybe you have a uh, wave engine that actually has the zero to 10 on it. So when you form that collective, now you bring in all of those features of each device into one collective unit. So now, even though you only you don't have a control four, say, but you do have the zero to 10 on your wave engine, maybe you're not using it, you can still use these features that we're talking about today. So the collective creates one virtual entity that takes the resources, is yeah. the resources, sensors, outputs, inputs from all the devices that are part of the collective into one. So they all share it together. Mm. Yep. Wow. So so that means that if I have, um, you know, I have this, you know, I'm, we're setting this up and, and I have four doors and now I'm out of zero to 10 volt inputs. Now, yeah. what can I do to if I wanted to add more zero to 10 volt inputs? Well, you can buy, you can purchase another device that has the zero to 10 volt. Bring it into the collective. And now you have, <laughs> now you have a virtual device that has eight zero to 10 volts yeah. in and eight zero to 10 volts out. So it just keeps, it, it keeps growing. That's yeah. fantastic. You know, I don't think anybody else, any other controller out there has a feature where every device brings all the resources into one and right. at the same time becomes a redundancy um, right. yeah. backup to each yeah to each other. So if one fails, the other one does. That's the big thing, Carlos, we're, at, we're talking about with, with Hydro's is redundancies. And uh, it, it's really such a strong feature of having these backup. You know, when if something should happen, you still gonna have your, your system running. Yes, that's fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and, uh, you know, I plugged in my zero to 10 volt I mean, uh, my quad cable into my zero to 10 volt input on the control four, but I also have a wave engine right next to it. I have a collective with a control four and a, control and a wave engine. So I could have just as easily connected into the zero to 10 volt in on the wave engine. It doesn't matter. I can use either one, either one. When I go into the app, it's gonna give me the option of eight different zero to 10 volt inputs, four on the control four and four on the, uh, four on the wave engine. So I just have to make sure that when I go ahead and pick the channel that I'm choosing, that I choose the control four channel, well, and I'm gonna use ch channel one. And we have this little breakout cable right here. I'm gonna show you, cause it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Um, um, and it shows you, the breakout shows you different colors. Mm -hmm. Each color represents a channel. So we have channel one is black, channel two is brown, channel three is red, and channel four is orange. So for right now, I'm going to live on channel one. So I'm going to grab the black one and live on this channel for now. I'm going to put the other ones on the floor. Okay. It also comes with a very, very long cable, you know, and also this is a mono 3.5 millimeter mono jack. So you can easily go to Amazon and purchase an extension. So if you want to make this cable longer, you just buy a, you know, 3.5 millimeter mono two wires jack female to male. And you literally, you can plug the female here and then plug the male on the other side and make it even longer. It's just, it, it'll work just as well. So it's not an issue, which is kind of handy, you know? It's very handy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of those little sensors that we have right here, the little kit. So I have my 3.5 millimeter female jack in here and then my little magnet sensor in here. So what I'm gonna do is literally, grab the black channel and remember I'm, I'm using the black one. So keep, keep track of what you're using. I'm using the black one, which is channel one and just plug it in. That's it. It snaps and you're done. That is it. So now, obviously before you do that, I, I, I apologize. You would mount this 
on your cabinet. Make sure that the wired one, you mount it on the cabinet itself, then the corresponding little magnet, this, the, the individual, the solo, as I call it, the solo magnet, that one is the one that goes on the door. So you can actually open and close. And as you open and close, what, what's gonna happen is this. So this is my door and this is the cabinet. Here comes the door, closed, open, close, open. That's pretty much what's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that to the block again. And here, snap it in, and that's it. So I'm gonna put this on my cabinet right here. So what I have now is I'm gonna go into my wave engine, I'm into my control collective. So I'm gonna have April, our producer here, show us my screen. All right, so I have a demo collective here that I've created. You know, it's kind of like, you, you guys are familiar with this demo, demo collective. This is the demo collective that I use for pretty much everything. So, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and add the input. So I'm gonna go ahead and add input. And then I'm gonna call it left, okay, you know what? Cabinet left door. Or right, let's do cab left door, right? Yeah. That's, that seems that seems pretty good to me. Type, we're gonna do zero to 10 volt. We've been talking about zero to 10, this is it. So it's pretty easy, just select zero to 10. Now zero to 10 input mode. I want it to be a switch, okay? We have different options. You have button, you have analog, but for our purposes, I want it to be switch. You know, in a future show, we're gonna cover button and a little bit later in this show we're going to cover the analog part okay so i'm just going to sit select switch okay input port this is the location the physical location where i plugged in the show the the uh the, the cable so i have to select core view which is my control four and the black channel is channel one but you can see here all eight channels are so i'm going to select one now what i'm going to do is the voltage now i know my read sensors will trigger between um, uh, between one and three volts, which is most of them will do that, okay? Now a read switch, which is that little magnet switch, it's, they ha it, has two, um, it has two possible options. It's normally closed or normally open, all right? Um, um, so depending on what you purchase, uh, you know, you may have to you may have to change things around, and I'm gonna and we'll talk about that. But trust me, if you have a, a switch that is normally closed, it'll work. If you have a switch that is normally open, it'll work too. So I'm gonna put the voltage one to three volts. Data type. I'm gonna say close and open because it's a door. I want to know if the door is open. I want to know if the door is closed. Mm -hmm. And then input when it's gonna be outside the range. Okay, I'm gonna put it outside the range. And notification level, I don't want anything. I don't wanna get an email telling me that the door is open. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with not knowing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that right now. It's gonna save. So it's saved that. So I'm gonna go back to the status screen. And now, you know, I'm gonna send it, I'm gonna change this to tiles because it just looks better on tiles. Okay, so now it says open because the magnets are separate. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put the magnet right next to this to the wired part. There you go, see, closed. closed. So I'm gonna grab that magnet and separate him again as if I'm opening the door. Look at that, open, that's it. So you know what the, the thing about it, the thing that I like the best about this, Dave, is that it actually says open and close. I do too. <laughs> I do too. It, it, it doesn't say something else that I right. have to then remember if it's what, what it means or something. It's close or open. I mean, I'm human. I'm sorry. And what right. I did, you know, I, I can't even remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday. Yeah, Nonetheless, yeah. this programming. So the fact that it says open and close makes it so much easier. Yeah. All right, so I have that switch. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and add a second switch. So I'm gonna grab my brown channel, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna plug it into my little second switch, get the snap, and then I'm gonna grab that brown channel and I'm gonna put it right here. And let's go ahead and add a second switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and add input here. And then we're gonna call this one cab right door, right? Make sense? All right, let's go to zero to 10 volt input. Let's call this one a switch again. 
now it's going to be channel number two because it's brown okay and then the voltage again we're going to keep it between one and three volts data type again we want close and open and then remember it was outside the range now if your read switch is normally closed then you probably want to select inside range if your read switch is normally open then you probably want to leave outside range all it does is it allows you to select what is open and what is closed does that make sense so if your reads if you set this up and then you you go to the status screen and you see that the read switch says open when the two magnets are together and it says close when the magnets are are separate they're backwards all you got to do is come back in here and it says open when change that to the opposite and then save it and that fixes the problem easy easy no 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 big troubleshooting so we're going to go ahead and do this i'm going to upload the changes and again the up changes the changes are so quick to upload it's it's, it's just amazing what it does so we're going to go to status right here so i got left and right so i'm going to grab the little switch the magnet and i'm going to put it right next to the to the uh sensor close so right now both doors are closed so now dave the whole point about this show is that we also you know activate a light so when i open the door i can turn the light on all right so we're, let's go ahead and add the light so i'm going to go back to the to this uh, interface right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and set add input, add output here, and I'm gonna call it cabinet light. Cab light, create, all right? So what I'm gonna do is the easiest thing to do is to create a generic one. So here's a generic code, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one input first. Let's say for those people that only have one, they have a nano tank and they only have one door right so we just need one input i don't need two i don't need three so i can go ahead and change the input here but i only need one so i'm going to put input and i'm going to do cabinet left okay active when input one that means this output that i'm creating will turn on when input one is what close or open i want it to be turned on when it's open not when it's closed right Dave? I mean, that's pretty much pretty yeah. schedule wise. I don't want a schedule. I just wanted to turn on when I turn the when I open the door. I wanted to turn off when I close the door. Output device. Well, we have one of those dandy lights from Dave, you know, that up that connects to my drive port. So I'm going to yeah. go ahead and select the drive port core view drive port number one. And then I'm going to go ahead and upload the changes. So what we have now is I'm going to go back to the status right here and you know what i'm gonna make this a tile because i do like tiles it's so much easier to read okay so we said that if the left door opens the light should turn on correct yeah so let's go ahead and take the left door open it up and see that yeah and the cabinet light turned on and then if you look at my my setup right here i'm gonna ask april to go back to me so that people can see all right and as you can see right, right here, I got my little setup right here. I got my little dawn sensor and here's my light. You can see the light right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this sensor and I'm gonna close the door. Look at that, light turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and open the door and light turns on. I mean, it's, I mean, how simple can that be? I mean, yeah. it's, it just makes it simpler. So now let's make it even more complicated. So Dave, I have a cabinet. And what I want to do is I want to be able to, anytime I open any door, mm. because my cabinet has two doors. If I open any door, I want all the cabinet lights to turn on. Does that? Yeah. I mean, that seems fair because I don't want to be opening. I don't have to, I don't want to have to open both doors in order for the lights to turn on and then tr close both doors to, to, to turn off. So what I want to do is if I open any door, I want the light to turn on but the, t the light is only going to turn off if I close both doors, right? right? I mean, that it's amazing. The human brain interprets that and thinks that really quickly, but to actually put that on a controller, you yeah. know, up until the hydros, it's been kind of difficult to do. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go back to my controller here and let's grab that cabinet light. I'm going to go ahead and edit it. So what I want is two sensors now. So I'm going to go ahead and 
hit the plus symbol and I got a sensor right here. And I want this input, I'm gonna select the other sensor. So this cabinet light should be on if input one, if cabinet do left door is open, and I want it to be on if the cabinet right door opens again, okay? But I want it to open either one. So I want it to, I want this cabinet light to turn on if the left door is open or, keyword is or, the right door is open, okay? So that means either door open, turn on. Because if I were to say and, then it would mean I would have to have both doors open in order for the light to turn on and both doors close in order to turn off. Right. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna change this to or, okay? So if left door is open or right door is open, turn on. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload changes. It's gonna quickly upload changes and then go back right here. So both doors are closed. Check that out, all right? So now let's go ahead and open the left. Look at that. Yep. Now let's go ahead and open the right. Look at that. Hmm. Now let's close the left. Light's still on. Light's still on because why? Because the right door is still open. Now let's close the right door. Check Lights that off. out. Lights off. <laughs> as simple as that. Now, let's even make it harder because you know what? Oh. We love we love challenging ourselves here. So how many times, Dave, have you opened the door and the light turns on and then you forget the door open and oh. then you go to sleep and the dar and the light stays on for the entire night? Yeah. You know, I, I've yeah. done that countless times. So let's go ahead and say, you know what? Turn on the light, but only keep the light on for a maximum of let's say an hour. Now, obviously for us, I'm, I'm not, we're not gonna make you sit here and wait for an hour, but I'm gonna say, let's keep it off for a maximum of 10 seconds, uh, on for a maximum of 10 seconds and then automatically shut it off, even if the doors are open. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna go back to advanced settings at the bottom. And then I'm gonna say maximum on time. Let's set that one to, obviously you would set it to about an hour, but for our purposes of this video, we're gonna send it to 10 seconds. I'm gonna click upload. So check this out. So it's gonna upload my changes and it doesn't work so quickly. I mean, it's, it's just shocking how quickly this thing, and th those changes are going, you know how fast it is? The changes are going to the cloud. The <laughs> cloud is backing up a copy of the previous configuration and then sending the new changes to your device. So every time I make a change, a backup of the previous configuration is saved on the cloud. If I make a mistake, I can go back and easily revert to something else. There's no other controller in the market that gives you that versatility and that ease of use. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the cabinet. All right, now let's say I walk away, I left it on, time goes by, it's an hour, and all of a sudden, after an hour, you know, boom, there you go. Yeah. Max on time. That tells you that the cabinet light has been on for too long. Now you could make it at the bottom right here, when it says run past max on time, what that means is do I keep the outlet on even though the maximum on time has been reached or do I turn it off? For our purposes, Dave, I wanna make sure I turn it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn the alarm off. I don't need to be warned when I forget that. You know, I don't need to be reminded every time I make a mistake. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that again. So you still have max on time. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the door. Look what happens when I close the door. Oh. The warning is gone because now everything is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the right hand door and yes, we're working on it, I'm changing water, and then I walk away, an hour later I come back, and all of a sudden, then it just kinda like, I forget. So now, there you go. So if it, you still get the warning that the maximum light has been turned off, but the, time, the, but the actual light is off, so I'm gonna have 
April go back to me right here and you can see the light. And if you can see the light right here on my screen, on my desk, you can see that the light is actually off. So I'm gonna repeat the same process again. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that magnet. I'm gonna close the door and I'm gonna open the left. I just opened the left door. Light just turned on. I walk away an hour later, you know, I forgot. The wife is like, did you turn off the light at the, the cabinet lights on the tank? And I'm gonna be like, uh, no. Well, you know what? Yes, I did, Han. Because an hour later, after me leaving the doors open, the light will automatically close. As soon as I close the door again, I don't even have to go into the controller. As soon as the, I, I close the door, everything resets. And next time I open the right door, the light turns back on. Yeah. You know, this is the kind of programming that you can do on the hydros, super simple without writing code. And, and that is something that is not available on other controllers at this time. If you think right. about it, Carlos, this is almost like a, a it could be considered a, a safety protocol. Yes. I know a lot of people have small kids. They may open the cabinet doors, maybe start tinkering around in dad's equipment area under there. I've heard stories of kids throwing coins and sumps and not <laughs> finding out about it and the damage you know. is done. But imagine if you got, hey, let somebody know somebody's got the cabinet doors open. Can you check it out? It's yeah, exactly. Think about. And I didn't even think about that. You know, this is a fantastic, that's a fantastic point. If you have little kids that don't know better, you know, they're just curious yep. and they open the cabinet door. Um, uh, yes, I want to get a notification, maybe a, a text message. Somebody opened the cabinet door. And then even if I'm home, I know the two year old went downstairs. So I'm going to run downstairs or whatever to make sure that the kid's not doing, you know, not yep. doing something. So yes, absolutely. I didn't think about that. You know, Hey, everybody, everybody has different ways of doing right. it. So guys, that's how easy it was to put a sensor again you're watching CVTV workshops we're wa we're talking about zero to ten volt input and the versatility of it and if you like the show we're streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube we do this every couple of weeks if you like the show hit the subscribe button hit the bells hit the hit the like button you'll get a notification on the phone hey Carlos and Dave are going live you know probably something cool that you might want to do check it out you know otherwise you can always go to Coral View um, uh, YouTube channel, or you can go to Facebook and watch the shows afterwards. You don't have to watch them. I want to say thank you for every, thank you everybody that has been here so far. It's it's amazing to see the comments. We love everybody's feedback. We try to make this show as as better as we can. And the unit, the Coral View Hydros controller, you know, we take your feedbacks very seriously, and we keep working on it. So the next part of the show, we're gonna do a regular water sense, a, a float switch. Yeah. Yeah, simple Let's, ATO setup. Let's do it. You know what? And I'm gonna do it on the same chat on the same zero to ten volt channel. Okay? okay, because now I have three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my red channel, and I'm gonna pull my red channel right here. Uh, here, here's my red channel. There's my red channel, and I'm gonna grab this little handy dandy float switch that we showed. Again, these are things that you can make at home. You know what? And Dave agree. You know, Dave is the owner of the company, but he even agrees. You know, it's like this is the stuff that you could do at home. And yes, we sell it at Coralview because of the convenience, but you don't have to purchase it from us. You can buy it from pretty much any. If you're a handy person, you can buy it and make it yourself and, and, and work with it. It doesn't matter. But if you're one of those people that doesn't like it and uh, is willing to pay for a little convenience, like sometimes with me, it's like, uh, you know, I'm too old for this. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to. Get somebody else to make it for me. Um, uh, then you know, contact us at coralview.com and you can purchase this. So I'm gonna grab the red channel, channel three, and I'm gonna grab this zero, this uh, three point five millimeter, and I'm gonna snap it in. That's it. That's pretty much it. And I'm gonna put this right here. There you go. Put that on the floor. So I'm gonna ask um, our producer April again to send me back to the hydros, and I'm gonna go ahead and press this right here and let's go ahead and create a new input so add input there you go and I'm gonna call it waste collector okay so this is a waste collector that I'm gonna use this is a float switch that I'm gonna put on a waste collector it's a container that I have where the skimmer 
uh, the, the, the skimmer pulls the waste to skim it. And instead of keeping it on the collection cup, what it does is it's going to move that waste automatically into this larger waste collector that has a carbon filter at the top so it doesn't smell, doesn't make my house foul. But um, um, and because the waste collector is bigger, then I don't have to clean the skimmer. I don't have to clean the skimmer every day or every two days. But instead, I do it like every two weeks or even sometimes every three weeks, depending on depending on your system. Um, um, so that's what I'm going to do. So it's a zero to ten volt input. We're going to do a switch again. Now we're going to select the red the red channel, which is channel three, and I'm going to do the same thing. You're trying to get, the, you know, you get, you're going to get the uh, the pattern right here, one to three volts. Now, let's call it water level, okay? And now I want it to be um, uh, inside the range. I'm going to leave it as inside the range, and I'm going to go ahead and hit upload changes. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the status, and here's my little switch. Look at that, Dave. It says dry. <laughs> so now I'm going to grab my little switch that I have right there. It's in the low position. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually pull that little floaty, whitey ring up. I just did that. And there you go. What? Yeah. Look at that. So now I can program my skimmer so that when this, when the, when the waste collector is full, therefore wet, then because you put the sensor at the top then i don't want it to be more i don't want it to bake more waste i don't want the skimmer to be on because if it puts more waste water into the waste collector it's going to overflow and it's going to it's going to make a mess so what i want to do is shut off the skimmer and until i clean it up so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to bring it back down and i'm going to go ahead and it's dry now see that so i'm going to leave it as dry Let's do that. Oop, dry, 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 dry. OK, so now let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and let's say you don't want it to be a waste collector. You want it to be something where you want it to be dry when it's high, wet when it's low, right? Yep. Upside down. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. You could. So how do I do that? Look at this, how easy it is. Outside range. I just switched it to outside range. So now what happens? Look at that. Now when it's down, it says wet. When it's up, it says dry. Look at that. I just inverted the entire switch with one click of the mouse. <laughs> How easy is that? And you know what the best thing about it, Dave, is? Is that it actually says wet and dry. It doesn't I say open or close. You know, do I remember what close, does close mean wet or does close mean <laughs> dry? Right. I don't know. Crap. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. But you know what? It says wet and it says close. So let's go back to, let's go back to inside the range because I want it to be, I want it to be wet um, uh, at the, I'm, I want, I'm sorry, I want it to be dry and then wet. So what I'm going to do now is let's do this very quickly. I'm going to create another output and let's call it skimmer you know what and we're going to grab the protein skimmer we're going to put protein skimmer right here skimmer level sensor it's going to be my waste collector look at that it's already there waiting for me i'll put device i'm going to connect it to quad number one and that's it let's leave it that way okay so check this out so it updates again so quickly and then we're going to go back to the status screen check out the skimmer is running Right? Because the waste collector is dry. Now, what happens if I do this, Dave? Look at this. Waste collector is wet. Oh. Check that out. Skimmer <laughs> shuts off. Yeah. See how quickly? Did you see how quickly I did that? I mean, it, did, it, did it really take 10 seconds to do? <laughs> Not even. Not even 10 seconds. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and drain the waste collector and everything ready. I'm going to back, back to wet. And I'm sorry, back to dry. And the skimmer turned back on. How easy was that? Yeah. And again, you know what? I want to open the door because you know what? Hey, let's let's do this. My waste collector is wet. My skimmer's off. So okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open the door in the cabinet because I need to get in there. So I open the door. It turns the light of the cabinet. 
great. I'm able to see everything. I grab everything without stumbling, without pulling cables out. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm done. Put back the waste collector. So the waste collector now it's dry. Look at that. Skimmer's back on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the cabinet because it's all set and the cabinet is closed. Awesome. Look at that. <laughs> as simple <laughs> as that. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Really you know, those are the, these are the little things that make your life easier. And like we said at the beginning of the show, it doesn't make your corals grow faster. It doesn't make your fish healthier, you know, but it makes my life happier. <laughs> it makes my life easier. So, hey, hey, Carlos, I didn't know if we announced, but these are eleven ninety nine. So you're not yes. working the bank. And uh, you get all, the full kit for mounting both two types of ways. Yeah, so you and you it's eleven ninety nine for one sensor. One sensor. One so door. we're not so you one door. So literally it's one door. Um, um so if you have a nano tank then you have then that's all you need. If you have two tanks, I mean if you have a larger tank and you got two doors then or three doors, whatever. You know, a lot of people I have three doors and there's two doors that I often use and the other door I hardly seldomly use. So I only put two sensors. But if you're one of those people that like to pretty much do it, you can add a, th a third sensor. And on that generic, and I'm going to go back and have um, uh, April show my screen again. On that generic right here, what I can do is I go back to the cabinet. And what I can do is I can move this to three select the sensor again which i can't right now because there's no i already selected two so it's select the sensor and then keep this or so then if i open any of the three doors the light turns on the light turns off when i turn when i when i close all three doors how easy is that and you know the best thing about it dave also is that i didn't ha did i need a screwdriver <laughs> you don't even need a screwdriver you don't even, I mean, yes, you do need a screw. I take it back. You do need a screwdriver to mount the little magnets on the door, but no, I don't need a screwdriver to come with the uh, adhesive. So it's a double sticky tape. So you can just stick them on in place or you can, it has the screws as well and you can uh, hard mount it. So exactly. It, however, you exactly. Can, yeah, you're right. So you don't need the. You can use yeah. the sticky tape. Yeah, that's it. So eleven ninety nine for one sensor. It really it's the sensor with the little with the little solo magnet and the three point five millimeter female jack. So you can just grab that quad cable. The the kit does not include the quad cable, so you need Correct. to purchase that separately. But if you have one already, most likely you don't need it. That's that's it. So Again, if you like the show, if you like what you see, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the bell. You'll be notified when we do a show. And this show was actually pretty cool. I, I, I was actually excited about this show because it really shows people things that make it easier for them. It's, you know, we always work on making it easier for the corals. We always make making it easy on the fish, but in the process, we make it harder for ourselves. So this yeah. is a little treat for me, you know? <laughs> It's a little treat. The, ver the versatility of the controller and and uh, all the uh, things that you can do with it. Yes, if you have any questions um, about this the show, or if you have any questions about other features of the zero to ten, please head on over to our forum forum dot coralviewhydros.com the diy section which is kind of this one kind of yeah. applies this is a very simple diy but the diy section has an extensive uh, post. It's actually one of the most robust forums in our in our entire community because there's so many people that are taking advantage of the ease of using the zero to ten volt port. Yep. So awesome. thank you so thank you so much for watching everybody. Thank you to Wendy. Thank you to John. Thank you to Bob, everybody that's been here. It's so much to see it. I want to say thank you also to April, our producer. She's always doing a fantastic job. I can't I can't can't thank her enough jeremy yeah. for the, with the great graphics and then dave this is it yeah all right this is a good, good show. show all right so everybody my name is carlos on behalf of myself and my co-host dave we wish you a good evening and stay safe <laughs>